people with high IQ struggle after breakups. And it's perhaps the reason you're struggling right now, struggling to either know what to do or to reconnect with your ex or to heal from that breakup. Perhaps you're high IQ person. And this would explain a lot of things. In this video, I'm gonna use a scientific study to help you understand the mechanics and why it's different when you have a high IQ versus other people to deal with breakup, to deal with those situations. I get my ex back.com. Everyone deserves a second chance. And before I introduce you this study, I want to remind you that I put together a quiz for you to know if you have any chance to get back with your ex. It's very simple, about 20 questions um, to assess the strengths of your relationship, to assess the root causes of your relationship, and to basically determine if your relationship is recoverable or not. The link is in the description of the video. It's totally free and it takes about two to three minutes, but at least you have an idea and you gain at least a bit of more data points in order for you to know if you have a chance or not to get back with your ex. So if you are either, this video is not about high IQ people, but I'm just gonna, maybe you can recognize yourself on this aspect if you are overachiever, highly analytical, very ambitious person, uh, or someone that we would refer as intellectual over excitability. This video is perhaps for you and you'll see, let me know in the comment section if you find yourself, if you find recognizing yourself in what I'm gonna describe today. So it's called the, the high pain brain in this study, a uh, study from Ruth Karpinski, <laughs> Department of Psychology of Pizer College. Um, and so we're gonna look, there's two different parts. It's a very long study. Um, I'm gonna really only look at the high IQ, uh, the hyper brain, because the other part of the study is about hypersensibility. And you see when you have a high IQ, you will tend to ruminate, you will tend to worry more than others. And this is when you have those psychological over uh, excitabilities. It's very hard for me to say. And that could create other types of, of conditions. It doesn't mean that if you have high IQ, you will have ADHD or mood disorders, but that could be a risk and a substantial risk. And we'll see that breakups can actually trigger those risks, uh, depression, mood disorder, anxiety disorder. So quick um, quotes from the, from the study, 20, 20, 20, 25 pages study. Uh, so I've tried to summarize it in, in few sentences. The highly intellectual, intelligent individual has a remarkable capacity of seeing and internalizing vast uncertainty, possibilities and problems. This gift, because it's a gift to be more intelligent than others, can be a catalyst for empowerment and self-actualization or, and this is where we, this is the point of this video, can be a predictor of dysregulation and debilitation as the present. So this is perhaps what you're going through and we're gonna analyze this graph. The problem with love. The problem with love is that there are too many variables. On top of that, it's highly unpredictable. I know the question people ask me the most is, when is he gonna come back? Will he come back? Will she come back? What is he gonna say? It's very hard for me, even with my ears, um, helping people getting back with your ex, it's very hard for me to predict the behavior of people. We can make some assumption, uh, some hypothesis, but it's very hard. People surprise me all the time. Um, and also there's an element that you have to accept is you can only know part of the data set. When you look at the situation, when you look at the whole thing, the only data points that you can use are the ones that you can collect. So if your ex doesn't want to explain, if your ex doesn't want to, uh, give you more details or more explanations. That's the only point of data you can rely on that are coming from you. And so you run your calculation, but you are missing data. And you are in that situation of, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Usually for me, things are easy to understand. Things are, I know I can anticipate, I can see how things would function, but here I'm lost and you hate that, right? If you have high IQ, you hate not knowing. 
because remember you're smarter than average. But in this situation, because too many variables, unpredictable, and you don't have enough data point, you can't make sense of the situation. And what happens when you don't make sense of the situation, you do one thing, <laughs> you watch more videos like this one. You read more books about relationship, about uh, breakups, because you need more data and you feel like, okay, because I don't have the answers, the idea is the more I learn, the more I collect data, the better I feel, right? Because I guess the feeling I have right now, this, this depression, this anxiety, is because I don't have enough data. Because there's so many unknown things that I need to uh, investigate and I need to get more uh, data. So you're trying to find rules, textbooks on how to get your eggs back. And then you can feel helpless as a result of that. Um, because when you consume a lot of content, you will find some contradicting messages. You will find that you're going to try no contact without being really convinced. Um, you don't control the situation anymore. And so what you do is you dig for more data, more and more and more and more and more data. And you ruminate. So that's where we get back to that, uh, this graph. Rumination is recurrent and persistent thoughts, impulses or images that causes distressing emotions such as anxiety or disgust. So perhaps you're watching video on breakups, you're watching my videos, other videos uh, from other coaches or other counselors, but you can't really make sense. So you watch more videos. How does that help you? Do you feel better as a result of watching more and more and more and more videos about breakups? I'm a strong believer, because I had the case recently, that the more you consume video, the more you ruminate, the more you worry. And that will create those uh, psychological over acceptabilities. <laughs> it's very hard for me to say. That would lead to potentially anxiety, depression. Okay, so the idea of you have to really change the paradigm of I need more data to feel better. Because in searching more data, you are fueling this anxiety, you're fueling the rumination. And as we discussed, there's no way you'll get enough data to draw any conclusion about your situation. Healthy versus toxic rumination. By itself, rumination can be good. Uh, people have this negative connotation, but rumination can be good. What makes the rumination toxic is the emotion associated, the thoughts attached to that, uh, to that rumination. If you ruminate about yourself like, I'm amazing, I'm amazing, I have an amazing life, I have an amazing wife, I have amazing kids, amazing house, amazing situation, and you ruminate on those things again and again and again and again, I don't think you'll uh, seek out help from psychologist or counselor, you know, you'll find yourself not needing any help and actually thinking that rumination can be a great thing. However, when you ruminate on things like when she will call me, what's going on? Or I sent her or him a text. What is he up to? Is he saying anyone? Why? No news. What's going on? You put your thinking also on things that you can't control. You have this negative connotation, the fact that you're rejected, the fact that you're not respected, as well as the fact that you can't control the other, as we discussed. But at that point, there's a situation, a part of that situation you can't control. And so why is your obsession so hard to leave? We are obsessed by things we can't have. Okay, you want, you, you buy a Porsche, you know, you buy a Mercedes, then you want a Porsche. You buy a Porsche, you want a Ferrari. We are obsessed about what we don't have. And so you can't have it, you can't control it. Your ex, you can't have that relationship, you can't have this person in your life and that's um, being sort of stuck in that obsession. If you think about it, trying to put your attention, trying to really focus all your energy, all your bandwidth, your emotional, your um, physical bandwidth on, will he call me? Will I get back with him? It's like being the passenger of a crazy car. So I don't know if you know this movie, Death Proof. <laughs> um, the guy, he's a serial killer and he has a car and he gets um, girls in his um, passenger seat and then she's like in a box without any seat belt. And he basically uh, drives the car and gets into accident to kill the girl. 
this is what you're doing right now. You're getting in, inside this car, letting someone drive that car, regardless of where it's going, actually by letting that person drive the car, by letting that person take control, you are fueling that anxiety. It's overwhelming, it's scary, right? So my tip, don't get inside this car. And whenever you feel that rumination, remember this image of this guy in Death Proof. It's a great movie from Quentin Tart, you know, extremely violent, obviously. It's a great movie. So think about, okay, what am I doing? Am I driving? Am I behind the wheel or am I in the passenger seat? And when you think about the passenger seat, look at this poor girl sitting next to this guy controlling this crazy car, crazy driver running into a wall. Accept things that you can't control. I can't control this. I'm not going to step in inside this car. You don't need those thoughts. You can't solve that problem. You have to accept this. And recovery needs to be organic. So perhaps in your, maybe in your work, uh, if you have a business, if you are, because people with high IQ, they are very successful. They feel like, okay, I have a problem. I'm going to put more energy. I'm going to put more resources to fix it. I'm going to force things. If you're a salesperson, I won't accept a no from my client and I find another way for them to say yes. With a relationship, it's slightly different. It needs to be organic because if you force your partner in getting back together, the dynamic after the recovery won't be perfect and won't actually be creating the condition for a sustainable relationship. So look after yourself and find someone who can help you to regain that control. Whether it's a counselor, it's a psychologist, someone that you find locally, someone that you can find online, someone that you can talk to and assess and have a discussion before uh, purchasing anything. That's why I have a um, 15 minute call for free for people who are wondering how they can stop those ruminations, how can they can learn from those uh, emotions, how they can feel less anxious, how can they feel less depressed. Give me a call. Maybe coaching with me is not for you. Maybe I can't help you, but at least we have this 15 minutes to assess your situation and discuss how I can help you. I can guarantee that those 15 minutes will be valuable, um, would be probably one of the most important 15 minutes in your week because that would be 15 minutes really looking at your problem, discussing your problem, detailing potentially an initial action plan and things that you could be doing to feel better, to stop ruminating, to get an idea whether you should get back with your ex, how to get back with your ex, answering those, in sort of attempting to answer those questions together. If you have any other questions or comment on this video, let me know below in the comment section and I will see you next time. Bye bye. I get my ex back .com. Everyone deserves a second chance.